Good morning everyone, welcome to our service of morning worship from the Pool Mission area. This week I'm going to be thinking about the idea of devices, how we charge them, and that connection with the Bible. So let's prepare ourselves for our time of worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pause for a moment to look back on our lives and prepare to make our confession. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Your sins are forgiven through Jesus Christ our Lord, who said, Go in peace, come and follow me. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts. Your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to the end. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He came to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the Spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him read in the prophet Isaiah. He asked him, Do you understand what you were reading? He replied, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom may I ask you, does this prophecy say this? About himself, or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and started with the scriptures. He proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. 
But Philip found himself at Azotus, and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you, just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, Ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The Gospel Canticle Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight, all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Interesting readings this morning, but I want to start with talking a bit about a revelation. I am no good at gardening, and over the years I've probably committed quite a few crimes against plants. My experiences have shown that I am eminently skilled in removing any possible sign of life from supposedly unkillable plants. Somehow even plastic plants have not been able to survive my most dutiful and tender care. So it's probably not surprising that I struggle a little bit with the plant analogies in our Gospel reading today. So what I'm going to try to do this morning is retell our Gospel in terms that I hope connect with other tech-loving but gardening challenged individuals out there. Jesus said, I am the power socket, and my father is the device owner. He throws away every device that no longer charges. Every device that has charged when plugged into me, he unplugs when charged to make room to charge other devices. You have been refurbished by what I have said as I have been speaking to you. Be part of me in the same way that I am part of you. Just as a device cannot charge itself, unless it is plugged into a power socket. Neither can you charge yourself, unless you are part of me. I am the power socket, you are the devices. Those who are part of me, and I part of them, will be charged. Because removed from me, you cannot charge yourselves. Whoever is not part of me is thrown away like a faulty device, and can no longer work. Such devices are gathered together, thrown into a fire and burned. If you are part of me, and my words are part of you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you will be charged to do what you need to do, and you will become my disciples. 
Now hopefully some of you will have clicked with this techie version of our redone. However, disclaimer, it honestly doesn't matter whether the organic version or the electronic version spoke to you. What is important is that something in your head will have clicked. You may not even notice it. You might have noticed it for days, weeks, months, years even. But something there in the back of your head is set there like a spring, ready to pop up at some point and go, remember that? There was a wonderful narrative of interconnectedness in our redone, and it speaks so beautifully to the spiderweb of how everything can be connected, albeit sometimes in the most superficial ways. I'll bet at the absolute least, and I will guarantee this, that one of you will go for a walk later, go to the shops, do something, and you'll see a plant or a piece of tech. And you'll remember something of today's service, be it part of the reading, something that I may have said, maybe just something that's popped into your head because it's connected with something that was in the reading or in this sermon or a beautiful picture, anything. Something will fuel your further thinking as God speaks to you in the unique way that works just for you. Anyway, a few quick thoughts about our reading. Firstly, I've got this really incredible device. It's a phone. It can access every bit of known knowledge in the universe. It can play every song ever written. It would navigate me to any place in the world with near enough perfect accuracy. Mostly. It can write the words of Shakespeare while I order a pizza and reorder my diary for efficiency. I actually understand that it may even be able to make calls, although I have a feeling that could just be an unsubs uh, unsubstantiated myth. Who knows? What it can't do is to be able to do all of this stuff if I forget it to put it on charge every day. There's a simple truth that devices can't charge themselves. Well, yet, with current technology. Maybe give it five or ten years and they probably will. Either way, as we are now, they need someone to plug them in so they can charge, and if they're charged, they can work. So the greatest, sorry, the greatness of a device is equally dependent on the provisions of a power socket and the owner remembering to put them on charge. Hands up, something I'm not always good at. I depend on my phone, but I'm always forgetting to put it on charge until it bleeps up to tell me I've got 5% or it will die. I'm going to come back to this idea in a moment, but just keep it in your minds as we think through a few other bits of the reading. What do we do when a device no longer works? Well, we could sit there and stare at it in the hope that it will suddenly spring back to life. But honestly, that gets pretty boring after a while, and it usually has a success rate of using a hot coal to cool a drink on a summer's day. It may be possible, but it's highly improbable. Most of us accept that the proper course of action when a device completely stops working, and I don't mean it just doesn't sort of work, I mean it's completely won't work, can't be repaired, never usable again. When we get to that point, we tend to throw it away. Much in the same way that you'd throw away, or maybe compost, not really sure, the offcuts from bushes and trees. Yeah, quick reminder, I'm really not a gardener. I don't know much about plants except how to deprive them of life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, back to what I do know about, and that's tech. Most of you all know the frustration of getting a new device or just generally moving an old device, moving a charger, anything like that. You go to charge it and discover that you don't have a socket free for the charger. This is especially true if you end up using the same charger for multiple devices as I do, and you often find yourself in that situation having to decide which device that suddenly decides it needs to be charged will have to take priority. I mean, there are alternative options of unplugging one charger that's in use, sorry, that's not in use, to allow you to plug in a different charger so you can charge both devices, or you could even just pick a simpler route of bun and double adapter and being able to use both at the same time, but honestly, how often do we actually do that sort of stuff these days? Just to say, there is a bit of a method in the madness of all this tech talk. Just like our devices, we can't fulfil our duties and potential if we're out of charge. To be charged, we need something that provides power, 
and something to plug us in. And as Christians, we already have both of those. Keep into the tech theme for a few more moments. Jesus is a power socket and God is the one who plugs us into charge. We're no more able to charge ourselves for mission and ministry than our phones are able to charge themselves. I'm sure most of you will use that term battery life to indicate how charged a device is. But there's more to it than just that. A device can only serve its purpose when it's charged. And as the charge level drops, we somehow subconsciously use the device less and less to try to make it last longer. It doesn't always work. A lot of people don't realise this, but most devices will have a battery saver mode that automatically restricts functions when the power level gets down to somewhere around 10, 15, maybe 20% to try to prevent the battery going completely dead. Consumer advice then, do not let a no battery go completely dead. It does bad things for the battery and you get to a point very quickly where phone does not work anymore. However, thankfully, most of you will be glad to know this, we're not devices, we're humans. Our power levels aren't as restricted when our charge level drops. If we're charged by Jesus, we always have the power to ask for more. So much so that Jesus said, whatever you ask will be granted for you. So allow yourselves to be charged by the power at the very heart of the universe. And aim to use as much of that charge as you are able to in the cause of mission and ministry, with the assurance that God is always ready to put you back on charge when you need it. Just as you'd not let your devices run out of charge, neither will God allow you to run out of charge yourself. And so I want to leave you with a thought for this coming week. Honestly, ask yourself what charges you and what drains you so that you can seek to balance the two. Amen. And just remember, don't let batteries and devices go completely dead. It is not good. We say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made known. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in his promises, let us pray to the Father. For the people of God, that everyone may be a true and faithful servant of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who proclaim the word of truth, that they may be inspired by the wisdom your Spirit gives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to the true knowledge of himself. Lord, 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who teach, those who learn, and for all who seek the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our families and friends, that the Lord will guide them in his way and give them joy in all that they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are hungry or sick, persecuted, lonely or marginalised, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the people of Wales, and of this kingdom and commonwealth, that the Lord will lead us in truth and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the whole human race, that we may live together in true peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the faith of Christ, and for those whose faith is known to God alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so in the final few moments of silence, we bring before God the prayers and petitions of our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants, as may be best for them. Grant in us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, the fullness of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.